Hey, spiders. <laughs> <laughs> and zombies and bananas. We hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our podcast, Zombie Banana Spiders. I'm here with Colin and Heather. And today we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving themed horror movies, mostly. Um, so, would anybody like to open it up with the. Sure. Uh, well, I, I'm I am thankful to be talking with you guys today. Uh, we all watched the movie oh, Thanks Killing recently, uh, which we were discussing. Sure. It's a 2009 puppet turkey B horror movie. Is that a good description? Do you guys think of Thanks Killing? It's, like, it's hard to describe. It is. Yes, it's like. It, it's the humor of Freddy Krueger with mixed up with like the the problematicness of Meet the Feebles. Yes, but it doesn't do either of those things as well as Freddy Krueger or Meet the Feebles, no. I don't think. <laughs> no. It aspires. It aspires. Yes. yes. The- while I was watching this, and and I haven't I haven't finished Thanks Killing. I've watched the musical oh. three times. Oh wow! So fun! But it's so, so good. fun! Oh my god! I can't good. stop! I can't stop watching it. I'm gonna buy the soundtrack. It is so good. <laughs> it is so good. It's like the movie wishes. Yes. It was a musical. Yes. <laughs> so I have things to say. But while I was what, and I think it was because I was wa- I watched the musical first, and then I went to the movie. It kept reminding me. I kept thinking of uh, the Lost Skeleton of Cadavera, mm. and how that one it was it was intentionally bad. They made it a bad mm. movie on purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Thanks Killing movie went far enough. Mm-mm. Like I don't think that. Th- The bad acting is just bad. Like, it's not bad with a purpose. Mm -hmm. I think that it was um, just, like, what was available, probably. But, yeah, that is something that I thought of when I was watching the musicals. Like, it's so unfortunate. I don't know how much their budget was. But, like, just in every way except for maybe look which is kind of saying something uh the musical is better like the acting is you can tell that these are good actors acting poorly Mm -hmm. like in the movie it definitely just is bad actors sorry and the thing is i was (laughs) i was trying to find um i was trying to find like behind the scenes stuff and interviews with the people who did the musical and i couldn't find anything um i found some inner like written interviews i didn't find any like videos behind the scenes or or talking with the with the um the people who anybody who sang it because the 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 bootleg version that's on um youtube is just the is it the nyc production it's just one production so. like they've done it all over the country and i think they've done it with different casts so um i just found a i just found an interview with um david eck who was the i have him written down as the screenwriter but i i guess he wrote the book i don't know it's him and then jeff thompson did the music and Jordan Mann did the lyrics for the musical and um, they were sitting down and talking about how they wanted to preserve that completely rushed on a budget feel of the movie and so they wrote the musical in three days 
So like they wow. they didn't really say much about about specific like what their budget was specifically, but they wrote the musical in three days and they said they went into it kind of like I guess like you were saying Hill how the 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 movie guys wanted the movie to be shared. The guys who wrote the musical said they wanted anybody to be able to stage this musical. So mm. it's like barest bones of anything. So they went into it with that same mentality, but they did it so much better. Yes. And so it's... Sorry, I have so many thoughts, but uh, but like the thing is the the script. Like I was I was amazed. I saw I saw the musical first, right? And I'm I'm listening to them when they're talking, not the music so much. The music mm -hmm. is fantastic, but when they were talking, I'm like this. They 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 changed this for the musical. They had to. There's no way they said the word turkeyology in the movie. And then I watched oh. the movie, and it was like, oh my god, they said turkeyology. So it's like <laughs> it's like this. The script. They just lifted the <clears throat> script, and they didn't have to change it. They didn't have to change the script at all. And so it's like they had it. They had. It's like it's like the guys who wrote the screenplay for the movie it's like they wanted it to be a musical because it was meant to be a like that the whole over the top the the like even more suspension of disbelief that you have when going into a musical like having you know being able to buy that this group of people is going to burst into song at any given time like it is <laughs> it's there and it did oh i love the musical i love the musical so much it is great, but it's funny that you say that they wrote it in three days because I was commenting to Jacob that um, it really seems like somebody had a pad of paper while they were watching this movie and just wrote down their thoughts while they were watching the movie of like how to improve it or how to make fun of it in a clever way and then made it into songs. And it was it was really clever. I was very pleasantly surprised. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent job. And if, to think, like you could have made a musical about anything, but they chose Thanksgiving, and that's beautiful. Like there's something poetic about that. That you know, someone would spend the time, the energy, the money, and all that on Thanksgiving. I love it. Um, so I I watched this literally yesterday and uh for like the second time ever and i really liked it because like it's it's a bad movie if you're if you're looking for if you're looking for a fun like enjoyable little romp i i don't know very certain people i would recommend this to but what i like about it is it seems like the filmmakers like they wanted to make a terrible movie like they didn't they didn't want to make any movie that deals with like logic or like they kind of don't want to make an homage to bad movies in a thanksgiving puppet uh puppet turkey horror film you know definitely i um it, i read an article about it where they were talking about how um they weren't going into this to make money they just wanted to have fun and so mm -hmm. like everybody that was involved wasn't really it was just like a passion project, which is kind of strange to say because it is it's weird movie, but um <clears throat> they were just having fun, which is cool. I think that's I think that's why I am drawn to these lower budget horror movies because it seems like you have to be in it for the passion of it and and, mm -hmm. and having fun because you're not necessarily in the same article. He was like, it, it took a while to build up an audience. It, it is now considered a cult classic, but it wasn't, it, it didn't have that immediately. So. Now it feels vaguely like a student film to me. Um, in like the best way in, in like, you're absolutely right. Hillary. Like you can see that like passion for what they're doing. Like, coming out onto the onto the screen and and what's nice is it feels like every actor in the movie like everything everybody's like in on the joke like nobody's thinking like wow 
this is going to be my ticket to fame or stardom or anything. Like, they're all there to just, like, have fun. And, and you know, as an audience member, if you can see that in the movie, then it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, and it, it's very self-aware. And that's what mm-hmm. is fun about it, because it makes fun of itself. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of, I have actually, actually haven't seen the first Ginger Dead Man, but um, Ginger oh. Dead Man... I can't remember if it's two or three, but it's Passion of the Crust. Um, that one is uh, on the set of a bad, they're trying to make a bad horror movie in mm-hmm. th- that movie. And it makes fun of like bad horror movies and stuff. So mm-hmm. that one, it, it just reminded me of the same type of humor of making fun of itself because you don't have such a big budget. I hear you. And initially I thought, I swear, I remember this being a, like, um, what is that to put out ginger dead man, uh, full moon. Is that full moon or is that, um, I think so. yeah, I, I swear. I thought thanks killing was a full moon feature and it's not, it's mm-hmm. its own no. like independently produced thing. But yeah, I hear you on that, yeah. the, that kind of self-aware self-referential humor. Um, and the Ginger Dead yeah. Man movie is a very apt comparison, especially when you compare the uh, the puppetry of this turkey, this hand puppet turkey, to the yeah. Ginger Dead Man in the later Ginger Dead Man movies. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the third one, Hillary, where he goes back to a 70s roller disco? No, I have not seen that one. Uh, is, is it? What's the What's the title? The subtitle? Oh, God. I can't. I know it's the third one. He travels back to a 70s roller disco. He escapes in the beginning. It's great. He escapes from a institution for criminally insane baked goods. And oh. <laughs> gets a time machine to travel back in time. So, there okay. You go. But but that sounds I digress. Really great. If awesome. the sub if the subtitle for that isn't slaying alive. <laughs> I, I'm going to be very disappointed. I don't know what it is now. It's got a, it's got to be a baking pun too, though. Yeah, it's true. It's got to be. Right? Yeah, it's got to be. Mm-hmm. You got to do it. It's funny because I think I'm, I'm definitely going to come at this from a slightly different angle because I saw the musical first, <laughs> but I think like that's where I see the passion project happening like Mm -hmm. everybody in that musical is having so much fun Mm -hmm. it's almost a crime and when i then when i switched from that to the movie it was like i probably ruined it for myself because all i could see were these missed opportunities and it the people in the movie with the exception of darren I think nobody and and the turkey obviously nobody else seemed to be having that much fun like they were definitely it, the 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 good girl was just dead eyes the entire time um yeah. the the jock it came it, like it came and went um mm. the the slut like Again, comparing her to the character in the musical, like I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. Like the 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 uh, the character in the movie, like I I just I kept getting knocked out of the story. Like nobody could be that stupid. Nobody's <laughs> that dumb, and so you are obviously playing somebody who is being that dumb. In in the musicals, like yeah, she's just that dumb. Like I absolutely believe it, and so it's like I I think all of the stuff that you are saying about the movie, I see it in the musical. I don't quite sure. see it in the. I I absolutely believe that it was a passion project for like the director. Um, of the movie and the guy, the like the 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 was it a, a duo who like wrote the movie and and you know who were behind the whole thing. Like I absolutely believe it was a passion project for them, but the the actors kind of killed it for me, mm-hmm. and it was that I I kept comparing it to the Lost Skeleton of Cadavera because 
you have the same type of purposeful um, bad movie making. But everybody, it seemed like, and I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't seen Lost Skeleton in quite a while. But it, it was everybody in that movie was on board the way everybody was on board in the musical. Like yeah. I bought that those characters were like that dumb or that passionate <laughs> or a cat. You know, it's yeah. yeah. I no, I agree that the musical did it way better with with mm -hmm. less. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Assets? I don't know. Um, but I think that that's what the movie was trying to do. I think that the they were trying to, like, the slut was so dumb. She was, she was a character that was making fun of the slut in every other horror movie, but mm -hmm. Either the actress didn't get the joke or she wasn't capable of pulling that off, I guess. I don't know. But I agree with you. It, it, it was very interesting to watch a parody that is better than source content. <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked in the... I, I found an article um, that was interviewing the guys who wrote the musical and they worked very closely with the two guys who wrote the movie. Like, they got permission, they ran everything by them. Um, I really liked that that aspect, and they, they quoted, was it Jordan, who, the, the Jordan who wrote the movie, because there's a Jordan that worked on the movie, and then there's a Jordan yeah. that worked on the musical. Downey. Yeah, they quoted Jordan Downey that the musical was so much better than the movie ever was, but then they quoted the the guys who made the musical and said, "Well, we would we would never have made this musical without your movie." So it was really nice that they like they worked so closely together and that the the guys who did the movie were so supportive of the musical and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the kind of horror community that's attractive like mm -hmm. everybody just supportive and wanting to have fun sorry Colin no I, I agree I was just gonna say you'd never get that with like a big studio film that kind of cooperation that that collaboration sharing and, and respect for everybody's work but yeah what a great what a great time I love that we live in a world where like this movie this musical Hillary you were talking earlier about the third thanks killing we'll get into that but I love that these movies exist. I love that there's people out there with this kind of this passion and zeal and drive to make these things and they go out and they, they do it like respect. And I'm so happy that they share it with like everybody, you know, that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's very happy. Yeah. So yeah, Hillary, do you want to talk at all about thanks killing three? Sure. Um, oof. I have <laughs> tried to get through this movie twice uh, in the past two days, and it's just a lot. It, it's a lot. This one, more so than the, the first one, reminds me of um, Meet the Feebles, mm. just like the humor in it. And there are exponentially more puppets in this one than the first one. Um, so it's, it's the, the, the may, uh, I, again, I, I made it about halfway through. It's an hour 40, I believe. And, um, it's just, there's a lot going on. I, I haven't watched anything on the making of it yet. And I'm excited to do that because I would love to know what these people were thinking when, when they made this movie, <laughs> because, so, so it starts out the demon turkey has become an actor and he settled down with a turkey wife and they've had a turkey son. And then for the turkey's birthday, all he wants is a copy of his movie, Thanks Killing 2. And unfortunately... It is the worst movie in the world and has been destroyed, um, except for one copy. And this makes him so angry 
that he kills his wife and sacrifices his son so that his son's soul goes he uses his son's soul to find the last copy of Hank's killing too, yeah. which is Turkey's in space or I don't know what the subtitle was but it it was in space um so he's back to being a demon turkey mm-hmm. um and then there's like space police who come either the the movie is so bad either thanks killing two is so bad that it destroys the future or something because there are space police that is like a a robocop looking guy and a little worm that sits on his shoulder Hmm. um it seems like they might have run out of budget for these guys (laughs) but because it's like googly eyes and like a just a flap but uh (laughs) that puppet um so there's space police and then so they threw the last copy of thanks killing two in the trash and there's this little puppet that's living in the trash and it hits her on the head and she puts it in her backpack and that's just the first like i there's so much more i don't want to like continue because i'll just be talking (laughs) For probably longer than the actual movie is to be honest <laughs> there's so much going on in this stupid movie uh oh my god but it's fun i mean it's a lot but it's fun that sounds great um <laughs> like i i cannot i'm i'm genuine when i cannot wait to watch that it sounds <laughs> like like I don't do cocaine, at, but watching a movie like that will probably give me roughly the same rush. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's pretty intense. So that's awesome. Yeah, and it was very important for these filmmakers that they start both their movies with breasts. So mm. that's something to look forward to, I guess. If if you're into that. <laughs> hmm. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could sit down and show your grandma. It's, it's good to yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. Actually... Oh, go ahead. No, no. I was going to say, uh, yeah, when I turn on Thanksgiving and the first shot is just some, like, boobs and that pilgrim lady running around topless, I was like, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's even better in the in the third one. I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Heather? Is is Thanksgiving three set at Thanksgiving again, or is it yeah. just the mm-hmm. turkey? Okay, okay, because it kind of. I was talking about this with Dan earlier. Um, that for some reason, Thanksgiving as a holiday to have horror and gore and boobies Mm -hmm. i don't know why that is so funny to me like it's Mm -hmm. so the 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 cognitive dissonance is so much stronger than any other holiday and i don't know if it's because like when i was a kid we watched um multiple versions of a christmas carol at at christmas mm-hmm. time and it never like really dawned on me that this is a ghost story like mm-hmm. it's a christmas not story. until the jim carrey version that's when it really seemed like a ghost story to me mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think i agree that, i, agree. I think mm-hmm. that might have been for me too it was just a christmas story but it's still you know you have that you have that horror factor you have that scare factor happening every christmas mm-hmm. so like horror horror movies slasher movies set at christmas time yeah sure yeah. why not but for some reason thanksgiving it's so like it's so funny to me and so i was just wondering like if if we wanted to to kind of dive because i know that it, it sounded like you guys have seen other movies like holiday movies set at thanksgiving in particular and so i was wondering like is it the same kind of thing like is that funny even for movies like thanks killing is is a, it's supposed to be funny like it's 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 a parody mm. and of of horror movies but like other horror movies that are set at thanksgiving that aren't supposed to be funny do you find them funny because it's 
I don't know what it is about Thanksgiving and horror that just tickles my funny bone, but I'm curious. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I was only able to watch uh, Blood Rage in the time that we had discussed the subject. So that one had a um it wasn't funny. But there were lighter moments that were kind of interesting and strange because like first of all, I why is it called blood rage? Who was angry in that? The dude who was killing everybody was it was laughing about it. Mhm. But I think it was they just needed a sweet title, you know. I guess so. But, like Blood um, Rage is a great title, and you could literally make any movie with that title, and it or or as a subtitle, it would be better. It's true, but not for that movie because that it, no. it was just <laughs> sad. It was just sad. <laughs> um, and I don't think like it was set during Thanksgiving. But I don't think that Thanksgiving was really necessarily a major important plot point. It was just like the gathering of the family was important. Yeah. Well, well, part of the story, I felt like. Um, so no, I wouldn't say that it was funny, but there was a, a weird lightheartedness to it at some points that was significantly uh better production quality than um thanks killing yeah i think with blood rage it's it's kind of like um like the friday the 13th movies like they say that you know jason's birthday is friday the 13th but throughout the runtime of the movies it's not really mentioned that much it's just like, eh, it just happens to be Friday the 13th. And at Blood Rage, it's like, eh, it just happens to be Thanksgiving. If you uh, yeah. change Thanksgiving and Blood Rage to, like, a family reunion or, like, you just call the movie Sunday Dinner at Grandma's, it would be the same movie, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, the yeah. Thanksgiving and But in terms of, like, analysis, I don't, I haven't, I haven't looked into um, the director or like the the writer or anything but it seems like they were trying to say something about um unwed mothers that i'm not sure what they're trying to say mm -hmm. um because the, the plot is um this woman has two sons who are twins and one night when she's out on a date and she has to bring the kids with her because she is a single mom and um she they're at the drive-in movie and that's where ted Raimi was uh selling condoms so i mean there is like a weird <laughs> uh humor to it but um so mom's kids are asleep in the back and she's making out with the date and then she's like oh no the kids are in the back and the date's like oh well they're asleep come here so um she's like me? okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's like okay so then the kids wake up and and they're like oh she's busy let's go do this over here so they sneak away and then i don't know how he gets a i can't remember how he gets a hatchet but one of them gets a hatchet and murders somebody and then frames the other one by wiping blood all over him. And the other one is catatonic from watching his brother murder somebody. So, and it, he, the, the catatonic one gets blamed and he gets sent to a mental institution. And the one that actually murdered the person gets to grow up. And then it's like 10 years later. And it's Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. but the mom um, finally on Thanksgiving, she finally is like, 
getting her life in order. She's getting engaged to her boyfriend. She's going to be happy. Like her son, but and the son in the Institute is starting to remember that he's not the one that murdered that person. Mm-hmm. So, um, she, it's just so sad because like the son escapes from the mental institution and that gives the murderous son the ability to start murdering again because the <laughs> he can blame his brother again because mm. the brothers escaped. So the first person he kills is the mom's spoiler alert, mom's fiance. Like this mm. poor woman. <laughs> she could not catch a break. No, it was so sad. You want to talk about somebody slipping into madness like mm. <laughs> that woman. Poor woman. She, she, that actress was great. She acted the heck out of that. Yeah, I cannot think of her. I don't remember her name. That would be an interesting take. This is kind of veering off, but the that would be a really interesting take. Like if they if they made Blood Rage two, Blood Rage three, Thor, you know, however many on, but if Mm -hmm. then the mom became the killer because Mm. of what happened in the first movie like i kind of feel like and i haven't seen all of the halloween movies um Mm. particularly not the more recent ones but um i kind of almost feel like that's that's sort of where that they were trying not that in particular but that idea of seeing how surviving a horror movie affects you like with with um jamie lee curtis's character and how she reacted and and how she kept coming back in the various sequels and and stuff like that which i i thought was a really cool idea and i think i think scream also worked with that a a little bit um yeah they definitely did that with scream but that was sort of more they don't go too in depth about sydney but they they did use the um, mom as the villain in the second one. Number two, oh, I think. I can't. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was. But Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we you should say like yet. many spoilers. Many spoilers. Here's, just... here's the thing: if you haven't seen Scream yet, what are you doing? Also, um, what are you doing with your life, kid? <laughs> Also, Blood Rage came out in the 80s, so I'm Yeah, like sorry. 81, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was 39 so years. <laughs> Our spoiler statute of limitations is two years on this show. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I like that we have that established. Yes. yes. So were you glad you watched Blood Rage, though, or did you feel just, like, hollow by the end of it, Hillary? Um... No, I'm glad I watched it. It was definitely a palate cleanser for (laughs) all the things killing I was watching. Because it was, I mean, it was acted well. I'd I'd never seen any of the actors before, but it was done very well. Mm. Um, So it was, I appreciate that. And like the, the main character who played, he, I don't, it was the same guy that played, um, Todd and Terry as uh I think he was supposed to be a teenager but honestly uh, well college student but he was probably at least 30 um he was very good at being like crazy creepy like serial killer sociopath and also like super sympathetic sad little boy mm. basically as he was kind of stunted, the one who was in the mental institution was kind of stunted. Mm-hmm. Or kid. It gives me um, slight Silent Night, Deadly Night vibes with the whole like witnessing a murder and it completely like ruins you. Like witnessing a murder as a child ruins you as an adult. But uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night kind of goes in a different direction. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, with what happens to them but um yeah it's All it's right. kind of neat and I, I wonder because in 81 they hadn't covered every single major holiday with a horror movie yet 
So it's interesting that they chose Thanksgiving, but I kind of wonder if the filmmakers chose it, like you said, Hillary, just to get the family together. Like if that was their only reasoning, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I wonder how, how planned it was because when it comes to like bigger budget movies, sometimes they plan on, okay, like, if we release it around Thanksgiving, we can have we should have Thanksgiving in the movie, mm. and that'll get people in or whatever. I don't know. It, they do think about stuff like that. It wouldn't surprise me, and I don't know, but if they were like, "Oh yeah, you know, Blood uh, Blood Rage released May third, I'd be like, "Yeah, that sounds about right for early '80s like slasher movies," you know? Sure. So I definitely. Yeah. Who knows? Um, there are so many. I, I've been like as we've been talking, I've been thinking about all these holiday horror movies and there's so many and uh, so many like obscure ones too. And it just makes me happy to think that you could watch a horror movie on virtually every major holiday out there. And uh, that would be a lot of fun to do in a year. I would think. Well, I was reading that Mm -hmm. they had initially intended um, Thanksgiving to be an Easter movie. Oh. I, I I was reading. Um, I wish I would have written down what the initial, what the what the original uh, title was, because it, it it incorporated eggs. It was a pun on eggs. Um, mm-hmm. But then then they decided that the thanks killing like rolled off the tongue better. Um, yeah, it really does. <laughs> I'm not sure because um, they said that they had the uh, tagline "gobble gobble motherfucker" before they even knew what they were calling the the film and that's the thing too like even as i was reading that it was like this this one movie like you were saying that that blood rage you know thanksgiving was it it, it wasn't really central to the plot like thanksgiving <clears throat> is central to this plot it's how everything gets started it's a killer t- so how could they have thought it would be at easter but but yeah like i maybe I, that was like early 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 days must yeah must like when they were yeah. still planning it or something but um now that you say now that i remember about gobble gobble motherfucker maybe it was because the filmmakers of blood rage wanted to have somebody say it's not cranberry sauce because they say that at least four times <laughs> Four separate times in Blood Rage. It's, it's not cranberry sauce. <laughs> okay, so is that a trope of horror movies, repeating jokes over and over again? Because they repeat the Jean Benet Ramsey thing. In, yeah. I know, that was so weird. <laughs> and then they stuck in the musical. They they do the same thing, like the exact same yeah, thing. She said the same joke, joke, and then they have a whole scene where you stop, and the the dumb character sings about Jean Benet Ramsey, <laughs> and it's just so like it, it's it's I this is why I have to get I have to get the uh, the soundtrack because during that mm-hmm. song in the 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 video because it's a bootleg copy the audience just loses it and so you can barely hear the singer i don't even know what the song i only know it's about jean benet ramsey because she keeps singing the name jean benet and then this other character comes out as jean benet ramsey and is dancing around and it's so tasteless but so hysterical and i was watching um i, I can't remember what the youtuber's name is um but he uh was reviewing thanks killing and mm. um he made a comment on that joke and how they use the exact same joke twice yeah they respond to the joke as if it's the first time they heard it and i mm. got the impression from the movie that they were like they were doing that on purpose like it was mm. supposed to be they were saying something with that. And so it's like with you saying they repeated the, the it's not cranberry sauce joke four times. Like is repeating jokes like that in horror movies? Is that a trope? Oh, and actually, um, I mean, it is a, a comedy thing. It is, it is a, a, a tool that's used in comedy. Sometimes if you repeat stuff, it gets funnier, but 
I don't think that's what was going on there because they actually <laughs> repeat that joke three times because, well, and maybe this was the joke. So she, and maybe they were trying to make fun of jokes being repeated in horror movies, which I don't really get, but um, she says it the first two times and then the nerd says it the last time that's and right. nobody laughs. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, but in Blood Rage... It seemed like, at least to me, when I was watching it, it seemed like the first time Harry, the murderous twin, when he says it, he's practicing because mm. he says it to himself. And he mm. like he like licks blood off his finger, and he's like, "That's not cranberry sauce." And then afterwards, he is with his friends, and they don't know he's the murderer yet, and um. They come across a dead body, and he he's like, "That's not cranberry sauce." To his friends, like mm -hmm. try, but not in a funny voice. He does it in a like, "That's not cranberry sauce." Um, so, and then he says it again for some reason after he starts killing people. So <laughs> that one kind of made more sense mm -hmm. to me. The I don't know about the, the things killing repeating it though. I don't know. I thought it was just the filmmakers being goofy. Like I didn't think they were parroting something in like horror that way. I think they were just like, Hey, you know what? This is some dumb thing to say. Like, let's just throw it in there. You know, I don't, I don't feel like it was purposeful that they repeated it for any other reason other than it would just be a dumb joke to repeat. Like, twice it's you know? really yeah i agree it's very strange that they chose that though like to mm. joke about like yeah i don't know yeah and was when did that happen and this came out 2009 did we say yeah yeah, yeah and when that was right the jean Bidet ramsey thing was a while ago like it's not like it was current events you know yeah. like Unless they were going, yeah, it was a for, strange. Time. Yeah, like unless, yeah. unless they were going for something. They just wanted to play up tastelessness. Yeah. Uh, maybe I don't. I don't know. Cause like I was thinking, like if you wanted to go, we want to like deep dive into the possible interpretations of this. Was like, <laughs> is it a comment on, like Freddy Krueger one-liners? You know, how how you could joke in the face of, you know, horror and gore and all this. But it's like, you've got the turkey. The turkey is Freddy Krueger with his terrible, terrible one-liners. And he doesn't even do them that well. But... <laughs> But, Dude in the play does it so much better. And he's just wearing a mask. Yep. yep. <laughs> like, okay, okay. So, like... The the fat like the whole thing the whole thing where the turkey kills the cop dad and then puts his <laughs> face on yep. like in in the musical it's a guy with a turkey head so like yes it's just as dumb it's just as dumb but in the movie it's a turkey puppet that this that's this high <laughs> off the ground why does yep. she think why does she think it's her dad why does she think it's her dad. Yep. Maybe it's, like, it's a comment on the fable Little Red Riding Hood. Whoa. Whoa. That's some that's Everybody's that's dumb in horror movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you it's know a... oh, go on. I was just gonna say like a comment on, on how the 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 guy in the musical, the turkey in the musical, does it so much better, and sort of like a a, a tribute to the to the lyric writer as well. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go through and count how many different rhymes he had for motherfucker bleep, um, because <laughs> oh my god, the quality of writing. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So good. so many different rhymes. Mm -hmm. It was good. <laughs> Very good. Because he kept reprising the song. It's not like he sang it one time and it was done. There were so many reprises. Ah! Yep. <laughs> so good. So good. Amazing. Amazing. 
So would you guys for Thanksgiving this year, would you recommend thanks killing or thanks killing the musical to anybody that wants to sit down and have a little bit of Turkey themed horror fun? Like where would you go? You know, as you said, Heather, you might've ruined the movie by watching the musical first, but as we, I think all agree, the musical is way better. Like it's just more enjoyable. So, you know, what would you guys recommend? Do you think? I don't know. Has can you appreciate the musical as much without knowing, like before you watched the movie because you didn't see what they were making fun of? Yeah, it's because like you had told me, you had told me little bits and pieces about the movie, so I had the general, general basic plot. Um, going into the musical. I didn't mean to watch the musical first. I was just, I was reading through the, the Wikipedia article on the movie and way down at the bottom it said, yeah, there's a musical that and I was like, music you say? <laughs> so I just, I looked it up on YouTube and it was, it, there was a version there. I was like, let me just see. And I like started, and I couldn't, there was no going back. It had me, like, in the first two minutes. And so I think, I really think, and, like, full disclosure, I haven't watched the the full movie. I've seen the musical three times, but I haven't watched the full Thanksgiving music, uh, movie. I haven't watched the, the full movie. But I got to the part where um, Billy dies and they have the Billy song. <laughs> and it's like it's 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 like the guys who wrote the movie knew on some subconscious level that it should be a musical because they mm-hmm. put that song in there mm-hmm. and, and, and so i think i i think i would recommend both now like this is not this is not I w- I don't wouldn't watch it with my family. No, 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 no. And mom, on your family. I, I don't think this is for <laughs> my you. family. I don't oh. think this is for you. Um, but but I think I would for some for people who who really like horror, who really like gore, who really like the the funny side of gore. Mm-hmm. I think you'd really enjoy this, and I would probably say. Watch the movie first to see what they do, and then watch the musical to see how they built on it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, and definitely watch the movie with like a group. Yes. Like yes. Like watching it by yourself is kind of. I'm not gonna say sad, but it's <laughs> like. Oh, yeah, I just kept thinking as I was watching it, I'm like, boy, I really wish I had somebody here that could also appreciate this. Like, like yeah, definitely. When I was watching the musical, I had to stop it every five minutes and go and tell Dan something. Like, he's trying to work. <laughs> like, he tried, like, no, you have to appreciate this with me. So, yeah, yeah, get a group of friends, get mm. all of the, the Thanksgiving Day leftovers, and... Yeah. Because the movie, the movie is an hour. The musical is an hour. It's it's not a huge commitment. You could watch both of them like in one sitting as you're drifting off to sleep from all that turkey. So uh, that's, that's great. True. I think you got it, Heather. I think that's the way to do it. Then then and, you get both of them. It's like yeah. it's like having your big ass Thanksgiving meal and then you know stuffing yourself even though you're already full but like those mashed potatoes are so good and they ain't gonna eat themselves you know it's like you gotta you gotta stuff it in there it's true oh man yeah and uh thanks killing is on prime available on prime so uh thanks killing three is not i mean if you want to buy it Um, you can buy it on prime but it's not available for free or for prime members and the Thanks Killing the Musical is, you can find a version on YouTube.
The uh, cast recording is also available on iTunes and Amazon. I believe you might be able to find it other places as well. And I think I saw in a YouTube comment, I think, that the cast that's in the the version that's on YouTube, that's the cast that's on the, the recording. So, oh, lovely. So, highly recommend. And they were great. They could all sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They could all act. It was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so good. It's Thanks, like a, killing the music. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I could never see, and I haven't seen Carrie the musical. Um, mm. I, but like after seeing Thanks, Killing the musical, I could understand how somebody might think a horror story could work as a musical. Mm. I think Thanks, Killing is a very special treasure. <laughs> that can't necessarily be repeated in other in other movies or with other movies, but I get how somebody could think it could work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Hillary, where did you watch Blood Rage at, if you don't mind my asking? That was actually also available That's on, on Prime. Too, okay. For free, yeah. For Prime members, yes. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I tried watching, um, I tried finding, what was it, Home Sweet Home? Yeah. A 1980s one, but um, I could only, well, I found a version on YouTube and it looked awful. Like, the it was so pixelated. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was an, a 2013 movie called Home Sweet Home that was also a horror movie, but I don't think it's the same plot. No, I, I think it's just a so. good title, you know, and so every 20 years, someone's like, yeah. hey, let's do that. That one is also supposed to be, like, set during Thanksgiving or is something really? like that. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, that was on the list. Um, I don't know what it has to do with Thanksgiving, but that's what I was, I was trying to watch it for that, but mm-hmm. didn't get to it. Hmm. That would be I something else. Like, something else that, that you made me think of is how many... Um, Thanksgiving horror movies are there where Thanksgiving actually is essential to the plot, you know, or is it Not just very used? Many. Yeah. I don't think there was. I mean, there was one. Like it's it's interesting because there's there are some like Blood Rage where people get together for like Christmas, but it could be Thanksgiving too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, as well. It's mm-hmm. just the fact that they're like getting together. Yeah. 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 Not many Thanksgiving horror movies out there. I that needs to change, though. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it's an open market. Yeah. Come on, people. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's for us to do. Ooh, I love mm. that. Would you guys make it? Would your thanksgiving horror movie what type of movie would it be like a ghost story a slasher a creature feature a killer puppet movie although i think thanks killing locked that down pretty hard but yeah, uh like what would you guys do hit me hit me with your best shots i want to hear it mm. maybe like a. I don't know, because like when you think of thanksgiving you think of pilgrim so then maybe like something like a disappearing like I don't know, like Roanoke type, disappearing mm. type, uh, it's just scary something. I don't know. It's Thanksgiving, you're right, Heather. It's hard to take it seriously when you're like, yes, it's a killer Thanksgiving. Yeah, because my initial thought, like, yeah, like I, 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 I Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, the musical. It's so perfect. How do you mess with perfection? But. <laughs> Like something about ghosts, like maybe a ghost something, but I don't know. It's probably my profession that I would be really intrigued by looking at the the actual history of Thanksgiving, looking into the yeah. actual Native American tribes that were involved with that, um, mm-hmm. like where Thanksgiving actually came from. But I would be very hesitant to include anything for fear of being um 
like disrespectful or or fur- yeah. yeah yeah like furthering stereotypes um mm-hmm. so i almost think like with i guess with, it would have to be funny yeah 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 like i was just gonna right? say you it, you almost have to do it over the top you, you, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. unless you did like but then again like i was thinking um, if you took the ghost angle why why is thanksgiving important you could put it in any holiday you know somebody was killed mm-hmm. on thanksgiving and mm-hmm. you know the ghost comes back to like haunt the family or save the family for whatever but like yeah, it could be it could be arbor day you know why why does it make unless they haunt the turkey which just brings us back to thanks killing again so yeah i wonder if ooh i got one I got one. Yeah. Um, all right. So, similar, similarly, there's a traumatic event um, during Thanksgiving di- dinner, mm-hmm. and a little boy is scarred for life. He grows up to become a serial killer who carves up his victims like the turkey. Yes. <laughs> We have a giant human-sized oven that he can cook people into. Does he cook them sure. after he carves them like turkeys? Sure. I mean, maybe he start. Maybe he does both. Maybe he leaves some of them like just dressed for kind of like in seven, like just mm-hmm. out displayed, and yeah. then sometimes he eats them. Okay, I like it. Oh, and you could have like some kind of weird twist. I don't know what the what the traumatic event, like initially event could be, but like maybe when he's a little kid, he's like helping his grandma cook and she shows him like the the family heirloom meat cleaver or 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 like you don't use a cleaver to carve a turkey, but like you know the big knife you use to carve a turkey like it's been it's been passed down for generations. You know that kind of thing. Then that's he, that's what he kills with. It it's their me. I always go goofy, but it's their family heirloom turkey carver, like one of those electric ones that with the two blades. It's been passed down for generations. Your grandfather makes the job of turkey, and so will you. So anytime he kills, you either have to have a really long extension cord or be near an outlet, like. Ooh, no, 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 no. What if the traumatizing event? Okay, so they've got this really old um, family heirloom turkey carver. You know, it's been it's 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 been passed down since the you know forever. And this this one Thanksgiving, somebody is like, no, we can't carve. Look how old it is. We're living in the past. Let's use mm-hmm. this new electric turkey carver. And it like, mm-hmm. the cart like goes insane and it cuts, accidentally cuts somebody's face off. And so that's what traumatizes the kid. And so yeah. he has to go on these killing sprees, but he can't use electric. Car- like he's, that's his nemesis. Like he's afraid of electric turkey carvers. So his bag of serial killing like implements is all manual. Like he has an old school potato masher in there. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> yeah. and it's all He's cast iron. Yeah, cast iron. <laughs> it weighs 40 pounds, the stupid doctor's <laughs> bag of like killing a Uh I love it. I, I want to watch this movie now. What's your what's your title, Hillary? Like or Heather? What's the title of this? We movie? gotta have something that's a pun, right? Yeah, it's gotta totally. be a Thanksgiving pun, but yeah. like a tasteful one, like like um, like you know, tasteful, but like but like not gobble gobble motherfucker, like something on the yeah. on the end right. of Silent Night, Deadly Night, or something like you know, it's something yeah. like that. Hmm. What what what? Past the green beans. Past the green. What? Like what's what's a food that everybody has for Thanksgiving? Past the potatoes. Past the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Potatoes, yeah. Yeah, and then and then the the cover of the movie or the movie poster could be like a bowl of mashed potatoes, but instead of like the pat of butter that's like melting, it's like blood that's melting over top of it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I love it. I love it. 
I, I want this to come to fruition now. <laughs> so much. <laughs> so much. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'll run it past Jacob. Good. Okay. Maybe he'll write us the script. Perfect. Sounds good. I love it. I love should it. If we... we write the script, we should have a live table reading. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I'm uh, volunteering him for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Great. <laughs> Recommendation. Here we go. Yes. I I'll go first because I'm super excited about my recommendation. Mm -hmm. It is this. It's Todd and the Book of Pure Evil. Um, this is the movie, but I am recommending the, the series in its entirety. It was two seasons um, mm -hmm. on Canadian TV of some sort, and and this movie came out later. And honestly, I discovered this. Because uh, Jay of Jay and Silent Bob mm -hmm. uh, is a character in here. He's oh. a janitor, but he also plays um, like kind of a wise um, words. Um, <laughs> is he like a mentor? Like, or? Yes, thank you. Thank you, mentor. Yes, he plays that. Um, in this, but but all the characters are so freaking just wonderful. There's uh, the guidance counselor is also a member of a satanic cult um, it, because his dad is like the leader of the cult. He doesn't necessarily want to be in the cult. He just has to be because his dad is in the cult. So like his dad is, uh, and his dad's old. His dad's like 75 or 80 and so he's like calling him and being like did you do this for me yet and he's like i'm at work <laughs> and it's a very funny um very funny relationship and then he has his group of friends that are kind of stereotypes but they they took stereotypes and they kind of made them um a little bit quirkier so he has like the main character todd is a is a high schooler and uh he has a best friend he's into metal and he's in a band with his best friend and his best friend's like a, a goofy like sidekick type but he also lost his arm somehow <laughs> and so like that that's like plays into things and every episode they're trying to capture this but the book of pure evil because it's loose in their school mm -hmm. and it's ruining everybody's lives and killing people. So they're trying, uh, Todd is the chosen one and he's the only one he, he will either bring on the apocalypse by becoming evil or stop the evil, obviously. So <clears throat> they're trying to catch the book in every single episode. And, um, <clears throat> this school seems to have like unlimited number of students because at least one student dies every single episode and they just act like it, it's not anything. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, um, two seasons and then I don't know if it got canceled or what happened, but they, um, uh, they didn't, in, there was no real ending. And then a couple years later, they came up with this, um, movie which is an animation so that you can't tell that they've all gotten old and um so yes i recommend this highly i it used to be on hulu but i don't think it is anymore i i had to buy the uh series and then i obviously bought the movie that sounds wonderful that sounds really it funny. is yeah um i would say I would say it is a 10 out of 10 books of pure evil. Wow. That's highly That's also a lot of books of pure evil. I, 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 yes, absolutely. That's awesome. This is my recommendation. It's a book called Winter Fire, <laughs> um, a novel of music and war. It's by William R. Trotter. And I just randomly found this one day. Um, but it's about, it's, it's set during World War II, and it's about a German conductor 
who is drafted into the army or he he joins the army <clears throat> and he's sent to the uh, Eastern Front, which was horrific. And when he comes back, he's sent to Finland um, to kind of oversee some things. I can't really exactly remember the details on it, but he um, he runs into the composer Sibelius, who is a very well known Nash Finnish nationalist composer. He's a, a nationalist means so many different things, um, but he he was he's a very well known Finnish composer. And um, this book, it's not so much on the horror side as it is sort of a uh, fantasy side because mm -hmm. the, the, um, the sort of mystical nature of, of Finland sort of starts to take over. And mm -hmm. the, the composer, he, he strikes up, or not the composer, the, the conductor, the German conductor strikes up this um, friendship with Sibelius and his family. And there's sort of this, um, this mythical thing around Sibelius's Eighth Symphony. I'm a musician, can you tell? Um, but he, he wrote, Sibelius wrote seven symphonies. Let me make sure that I... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to get this wrong. He wrote seven symphonies and they were so well received that everybody was anticipating his eighth symphony. And yeah. Sibelius was like, I'm screwed. I, I, it doesn't matter what I write. I, I could be the, the, the greatest composer to ever compose. The, the expectations for my eighth symphony are so high. I could never please anybody. And so Sibelius has this, this sort of, uh, what's words, um, complex, complex about writing the eighth symphony. And this conductor decides that he's going to make Sibelius write this symphony and then he's going to conduct it. And it's going to be his return to, um, triumph and and all this so it's like it, there's a lot of intrigue there's a lot of um, there's a lot of Finnish uh, like folklore and and legend yeah. that's in in the story um, what happens to the conductor is yeah. kind of horrific uh, like sort of mm -hmm. if we're thinking sort of on a spectrum so it's a really really good book um, not too like it, it is a it is a um it's a, it's a novel so it's it's not like it's it's historical or even yeah. even necessarily historical fiction it was just somebody had this idea to write about um about this this uh composer who did exist and a conductor who i don't think existed but yeah. very very good cool yes sounds good and how long is it heather is it a typical heather book it's 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 getting there. It's, it's not that long. It's only um, it's only four hundred and eighty five pages. It's that's pretty good for you, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> this is a short Heather book. Yeah, so. not too shabby. That sounds pretty good. And who's the author on that again? William Winter Fire. William R. Trotter. It's called Trotter. Win okay, Winter cool. Fire. Awesome. Sounds good to me, man. How about you? What is your recommendation? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, well, we were talking about Thanksgiving, which is a bad movie and, and involves turkeys. So I, I found a, another turkey that's a bad movie, and that's Highlander 2, The Quickening, <laughs> the ultimate bad movie. <laughs> I love it, personally. I, I love its badness. Um, I... You know, okay, so Highlander is one of my favorite fantasy, uh, I guess you call it a fantasy film, but I, I love it. I love the mythology. It's just great. And then they decided to make a sequel, and the director is like, kind of like the, what was that, um, uh, that not composer you were talking about, Sibelius. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I just can't top this. So he's like, so I'm going to make the worst garbage you've ever seen. 
And uh, <laughs> they did that. They ruined the Highlander mythology um, by making them aliens from the planet Zeist 500 years ago. <sighs> okay. Uh, it's But it's great. Uh, Sean Connery shows up for no discernible earthly reason that's related to any sort of logic on a stage where they're performing Macbeth and somebody calls him a shithead. <laughs> great. Just uh, Highlander 2. I, I don't know. I feel like I could talk about this all day. And I know I've just babbled nonsense at you guys, but uh, just just watch Highlander 2. That's That's it. That's all I got. Highlander 2. It's a turkey, and I'm thankful for it. So, there you go. Tying it all back around. Is that a VHS? Of course it is, Hillary. Are you kidding me? Like, it's VHS. Do you have a VCR still? Turn away from the camera, lean over, and pull out a random VHS. It's Doctor Who. It's Robot, the first Tom Baker story. I could right here. Uh, let's see. I don't even know what I'm grabbing. It's Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger on VHS. Oh I'm, this room is covered in VHS tapes. <laughs> That's how I roll. You, you, so I'm assuming you still have a VCR that works. <laughs> nope. I, have, I cannot. <laughs> no, of course I do. It's sitting right over there. Okay, because I do have VHS still, but I don't have a VCR anymore. Oh. See, what I like about VHS, I'll be real quick, is that um, I like that they don't, they rot away and the quality gets bad, but I feel like a DVD, you get a simple scratch and you're done on there. And I like that there's a lot of movies that aren't on DVD that you can get on VHS, which... I love really bad, obscure type movies, so that's fun. That's I my hear two, you. That's my two cents. So watch some more VHS, people at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any trivia for us? Sure. <laughs> We've got the amazing Colossal Horror Trivia Book. Uh <laughs> Pick a number between one and one thousand eight hundred and fourteen. You do it, Heather. Okay. Uh, two hundred and thirty-seven. Two thirty-seven. Okay, that's a shining reference, and I like it. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> I just, I picked two because two is my lucky number and 37 huh? is funny to me. I, for some reason, the number 37 makes me laugh. Good. It's a good, solid prime number. Great. <laughs> All right. So your category is Frankenstein's through the 60s through 90s. <laughs> oh, dear. No. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. It's about to get real up in here. Uh, oh boy okay okay where does baron frankenstein peter cushing discover the body of his creature kiwi kingston in the evil of frankenstein 1964 where, where does he discover the body yep the refrigerator this creature you're close oh. blue yeah. What's that? Blue. He is frozen in a glacier. Ah, oh, good call, Hood. So you guys were getting good. Uh, in what 1966 horror western does a descendant of Dr. Frankenstein, played by Narda Onyx, turn a gunslinging outlaw, Cal Boulder, into a monster with an artificial brain? I think we've covered this before in a trivia section. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, you want the name I'll of the movie? Hint. You want the name yeah, of the movie? Yeah, name of the movie. Okay. The hint is this movie is in the public domain, and I've said it before, the worst Frankenstein monster I've ever seen. The laziest. Oh, oh yeah. I remember you saying, you saying that. that. I don't remember <laughs> what the movie's called. 
Oh, that'd be Jesse oh. James meets Frankenstein's daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. To five stars. Oh. 10 out of 10 <laughs> evil books. I would <laughs> <laughs> How does Baron Frankenstein, Peter Cushing, meet his fate in Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed from 1969? He falls into his own pit of alligators and is eaten. That's the one where he gets hit by the car and he gets pinned between a tree and the car and then she chops his head off with a, a machete. You know, you guys were very close. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's carried into a burning house by his vengeful creation. Very poetic. Ah, so None when, of that machete decapitation. When you say we were really close, you mean not close at all. <laughs> That's good. Uh, you guys are getting good. Don't worry. You're getting good. <laughs> How did the creature, David Prouts, accidentally destroyed in a horror of Frankenstein, 1970? He eats some bad fish. Uh, all I got is he stuck his finger on a light socket. You guys, once again, <laughs> real close. A little girl accidentally <laughs> douses him with acid. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it happens, man. You know, all those little girls in their buckets of acid. It was 1970 when lawn darts were a thing. It wouldn't surprise me if, like, Remco sold a bucket of acid. They, as a toy. They did. Surprised. It was this it was the, the science kit. <laughs> did you ever see in the fifties, this is real, they had a nuclear radiation kit. Oh, and God. it came with little tiny nuggets of like isotopes that you could do experiments with until they realized, holy shit, this is gonna cause a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What nineteen seventy three T V production features a Frankenstein monster, Michael Cesarin? or Sarazin, sorry, who's quite handsome when first created, but becomes increasingly ugly as the film progresses. Mm. This one? Yeah, it is. Okay. Mm. Phantom year, of the Frankenstein. Ooh. What year was it, you said? 73. 73. TV I Frankenstein. Pet Frankenstein. You guys were real close. Frankenstein, the true story. Uh, I okay. would much rather watch either of your two movies. <laughs> uh, okay. How does Baron Frankenstein, and bonus trivia, who plays him in this question? How does Baron Frankenstein react to the destruction of his latest project by asylum inmates in Frankenstein and the monster from hell? So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it was Peter Cushing. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> um, you got it. So wait, okay. So how does he react to this? Yeah. When the inmates destroy uh, his monster in Frankenstein, the monster from hell. He realizes. Oh, go ahead. He'll go ahead. Oh, I just think he's certainly put out. Mm hmm. I was going to say he realizes the error of his ways and invites them all out to dinner. Well, considering it's in a prison, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Hillary, you were really close, though. He, he, the dedicated but now totally demented scientist, calmly sweeps up the mess, all the while discussing plans for his next creation. So, yeah, he's just like, yeah, that's cool. Okay. What rock star plays Baron Frankenstein in The Bride, 1985? Alice Cooper. It's going to be the right answer someday. It will, one of these days, it will. Uh, I'll, give you guys, I'll give you a hint, Heather. He wore a tiny little space loincloth in Dune. No! <laughs> David Bowie? Stan, yep. Oh. Oh, this, yeah. As soon as you started saying tiny little, my, I'm like, mm, did they paint his pants on? It was probably David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of the babe. Okay, okay. which <laughs> the babe with the power? What power? The power of voodoo, Heather. Who, who do? <laughs> you do. Do what? 
Remind me of the babe. <laughs> okay. Which two films produced in the late 80s claim to tell the true story surrounding the writing of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? Two films? Uh, Ooh, two films. I, I knew one of these. You said late, late 80s? 80s? Yes. I'm going to say one of them was Mary Shelley, The Untold Story. And... Oh, yeah, wasn't there, was that um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, that one movie with um, Julia Roberts? No, that was 90s, I think, early 2000s. The oh, one sorry. I of is a Ken Russell movie, and it has a dream sequence where a woman has eyeballs for nipples. So if that helps oh, narrow it down. I, that does did not seem familiar, that one. but I don't remember what it was called. Because mm. I saw something so long ago, and like I want to say, I want to say it was in school, like when we were we were reading Frankenstein. Like one of my teachers decided to be a good idea to show us. Like it was a movie about that 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 get together with Lord Byron and Mary and Percy Shelley and. Oh, uh, what was that other uh, the other people Walker who were there? Paul Doris yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was like a movie about that, and there was this weird ass dream sequence. I don't remember nipples for eyeballs or eyeballs for nipples. Um, yeah, the I I think it's the in another dream sequence, a woman is um, <laughs> let's say. Uh, penetrated by a suit of armor with a metal erection. So uh, it's a Ken Russell movie, need I say more. Uh, definitely check it out. That movie is Gothic from 1986. And the oh. other movie I haven't heard of is called Haunted Summer from 88. So I wonder if that's what you watched. Maybe. It's cool. Maybe. Did you know, and I could be totally wrong because I, I tend to get like facts mixed up but that summer that those guys all got together it was it was like called the year with no summer because the summer in in england like didn't happen it was cold all yeah. year round and i believe it was because of a volcanic eruption mm -hmm. um i don't remember exactly which one but it was a famous one Mm -hmm. where it threw it was so such a powerful volcanic eruption it threw so much crap into the atmosphere that it affected mm -hmm. the weather and that yeah. was why they all stayed inside and told ghost stories yeah i i knew about uh the year without a summer it, they also call it like 1800 and froze to death <laughs> but um i didn't know that, that was the same summer that they went and wrote frankenstein and Dr. Polidori wrote like the vampire. I think that same weekend or started. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. cool. That's awesome. All right. Two more Frankenstein questions for you guys. In what vehicle oh, does Dr. Buchanan, John Hurt, travel back through time in Frankenstein Unbound, 1990? Time machine. Close. <laughs> uh, DeLorean. Uh, you're both really close, but think more Kit. He travels back in time in a talking car, as you do. <laughs> as you do. And last one, one of my favorites here. What movie star plays the sensitive, horror-movie-loving father in Frankenstein and Me, 1996? I love it. I love this answer. What actor? Christopher Lloyd. <gasps> <clears throat> Christopher Lee. <laughs> I know. Burt freaking Reynolds in the Burt Reynolds Frankenstein movie. I love it. <laughs> so good. Well, that was Frankenstein trivia on our Thanksgiving turkey spectacular. So, <laughs> How many did you guys get? It was probably better than us. Probably. He got none of them. Um, I got Peter Cushing for a bonus point. So. 
Oh, there that, we go. There we go. Barely, that does not count. That does not count. Clearly, Heather is the Frankenstein winner. Heather, post production, put a Frankenstein graphic over your face now. So, if you have any Thanksgiving themed horror movies that we did not mention in this podcast, leave it in the comment section down below so that we can watch them. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us. Happy Turkey Day. You know that the holiday is kind of problematic, but family. Um, <laughs> 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 Where can we find you, Colin? Uh, you can find me at colinrichardsart.com or Colin Richards Art Facebook, Colin Richards Art Instagram. Uh, I'm also on YouTube as Markers and Monsters, uh, where I might be doing some Thanksgiving themed art. Uh, I don't know. Go check it out. Find out for yourself. Very cool. That's uh it. <laughs> And I'm at uh, Heralius underscore art on Instagram. Heather Ann is here with us. If you have something to say to any of us or Heather Ann, <laughs> <laughs> we have Zombie Banana Spiders on Instagram and Facebook and I don't know, Twitter, email, <laughs> Gmail. Yeah. I'm good at Maybe this. Maybe the Twitches. We'll see. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get Twitch together. So if you guys want to watch movies with us, oh, then maybe we could do that mm -hmm. on Twitch. So um, I'm going to stop butchering this, and we'll see you next time. Everybody's acting so surprised. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand. We've been saying what was going to happen for months. Jacob and I have been like, this is what's going to happen. And exactly what I, we said was going to happen is happening. And everybody's <laughs> acting so surprised. And, it's, and there was an article the other day about how... Um, the movie industry has been setting itself up to fail like this for a long time. And that's something that we have been saying also. Like, they have not been trying to move with the times. They, have, they still think that 3D is the answer. <laughs> like, they tried that with Jaws. When was Jaws? The 70s? 80s? When was well, Jaws? Like, Jaws 3D was in, like, 85, I think. Okay. So yeah. so, yeah, 80s. Like, it didn't work in the 80s. It didn't work whatever sorry that being said jaws 3d is amazing it's so bad <laughs> like, i agree completely <laughs> it is not the answer <laughs> oh and so yeah so it's just like they could have been talking to streaming services before now they could have been setting up their own streaming services there's no reason amc couldn't have set up a streaming service and made it would have sucked for the distributors it's probably better for the distributors that it happened this way but like made it so that amc is it is the only entity that will re that will release disney movies or that will release like whatever they could have made it a huge deal like that mm. but now they're effed they're effed <laughs> pretty much <laughs>